Hi, welcome to Film Roundtable. My name is Jimena Prieto, and I'm very excited to be introducing this wonderful group. I wanted to start first with our moment of silence. We honor all reported worldwide 2,748,737 COVID deaths as of today. We are recording this on March 27th, 2021. We'd also like to honor all our Black, Brown, and Asian brothers and sisters, as well as our First Nation brothers and sisters whose lives have been taken at the hands of police brutality and other senseless acts of violence. Thank you, guys. So the moments of silence are sort of just to remind us that we're still in the midst of a pandemic and that now and always we aim for greater compassion and empathy for one another through our life and our work. So that being said, it is an honor to introduce three visionaries today who embody that ethic. We have with us artist and filmmaker Jen Nikiru, whose varied work has covered documentary, art films, and music videos. Pushed through surrealist lens, her works are grounded in the history of Black music, Afro-surrealism, the aesthetics of experimental film, international art cinema, the Black arts movement, and the rich and varied tradition of cinemas of the Black diaspora. Most recently, she won a Grammy Award for her work on Brown Skin Girl. We also have with us Kwesi Furjor, who is a US-based director and creative director who is a part of the creative team, who was a part of the creative team at Parkwood Entertainment for 10 years and is the co-director of Black is King, for which he received an NAACP and Grammy nomination. And finally, we are joined by Academy Award-winning production designer, Hannah Beekler, who has designed the intricate visual worlds of Moonlight, Creed, Beyonce's Lemonade, and Black Panther, for which he made history in 2019 as the first Black production designer to be nominated and to win uh, an Oscar. Hannah also happens to be one of my greatest mentors and was a big part of putting this conversation together. So thank you so much, Hannah. Um, and thank you all for being here. I will hand the baton to you guys to take over and just wanted to start with an initial question of what has been a new or important source of inspiration and creativity in the past year for each of you. Um, Hannah, if you want to get started. <laughs> Thank you, Jimena. I love you to death. And <laughs> love you. I'm so glad to be in conversation with Kwesi and Jen. Um, I know we can talk and I will say, you know, very briefly and then we'll kind of, you know, move on and, and you guys can answer. For me, a big source of in inspiration, I think in the last year, has been just, uh, you know, the fortitude of people, of humanity. Mm. And, um, you know, there's some low points where I needed that. And it has lifted me up to make me see things in a different perspective, a different way. So that's been a big source of inspiration, I think, over what has been um, sort of an up and down and all around year. I don't know, what are you guys mm. crazy? Um, for me, it has been, um, and, and this may be a deep one to start, but it's been, a, it's been a lot of my pain and, and, and struggle and, 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 and nurturing those things and, and, and assessing what it is that I need. Um, and, and in, in that, uh, it has in trying to figure out that medicine it is really, it is really served as an inspiration for me to be able to, you know, truly understand what it is that I want to get out of the creative and how I want to create and what I want to visualize and what are pictures that I need to see in order to nurture myself. So that that has, you know, that that has been a huge inspiration for me. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. Um, I think for me, it's gonna sound like a maybe an abstract one there have been many things but there is um for me it's actually been the sun you know mm -hmm. is the kind we of see it. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. is, is the is the um the sun as the sun being you know such a, a giver and nurturer and a maintainer of life but also kind of like the promise of tomorrow because i feel like there's been so many over the last 12 months there have been so many you know dark nights you know that we've all endured as as a people and um in all things good and bad and in between it's kind of like this kind of re my reverence towards nature mm. um and uh um you know, mm. the, the, the confidence and the belief that, you know, seeing things grow, I've seen a lot of things grow. My sister had a, a son last year. And so seeing him grow uh. has been um, a, a reminder that life continues, you know, trying to grow things around myself and within people and around people has been a reminder that, that you know, um, the spirit of continuation still exists, exists. you know, and it's like, presence so that's been a grounder for me over the last 12 months I would say wow wow I love that and I love this, this that idea of just allowing nature to ground you in a way that's like purifying right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. I really I, I, I do I really love that and I think that I've you know in the space that I'm in currently being able to, to, to stand firmly, right? Mm. And I think that like we were talking about earlier before, mm. um, you know, just this act of deciding and, 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 and for me, that's truly standing firmly, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. energetically being able to really accept what nature and what God has provided it as a source of, as a revitalizing source of yeah. energy um, is important as creators, mm -hmm. right? And I think mm -hmm. that, that that's that's been important to me because I think in this time of my life, I've really been, you know, it's really been important for me to listen to myself and listen to my gut. And, yes. um, and a lot of that has everything to do with energy and the sun Absolutely. and, you know, this, this world that's been provided that we don't fully utilize. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There's so much in what you said too, like there's something around, um, and you know, it comes with wisdom is age and experience, right? Yeah. So it comes yeah. with a sense of age and experiences also just listening to that innate intuitive voice, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like it's one that it's 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 never stared me wrong my intuition has always been correct as to yeah, wherever I've always listened to it <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's something else and I think that's something that's come more recently for me um and I, to some extent I've always listened but really listening you know and really um mm -hmm really sitting in a very humble space you know yeah, um always uh, i give everything up to up to the creator you know and i'm, I'm right. but a vessel yeah and so it's it's you know so kind of like visioning things that way like keeps you clear too or as clear as one can be in this mad world um and so yeah that's and being gentle to self i think we're sometimes we're so speak for myself you know sometimes we're too um sometimes I, I you know speaking for myself I'm like I'm too um uh I well I'm in a growing space it's going to turn into a therapy session <laughs> <laughs> but just learning how to be gentle with myself you know yeah. and um give myself time you know and um do things with ease you mm -hmm. know um push don't break or bends don't break, they say. Um, so all these things are like, I'm just, I'm in this space in life where I'm really on a very intentional level, for, you know, creating space for myself, you know, just for wonderment too, yeah, you know, yeah, there's yeah. so much, you know, there's this kind of like, we, it's so easy to feel like cogs in the machine of capitalism, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, if you're not actively doing something then really you're not doing anything and the conversation I was having with a friend of mine recently I said you know the rest is a part of the work too you know mm -hmm. the reflection that's how that's how we get you know 
that's how we get to the materialization of the work is the rest, is the reflection, is the time for space, is the time for wonderment, is the time for daydreaming. All these things are so important. Um, so yeah, these are things that I'm just at this point in life, like, you know, really leaning into, you know? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. And then also just, to, just to add, for me, it's been that listening to instinct and uh, well, uh, yeah, listening to intuition and allowing that to be instinct. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Yes. You know. And yes, all the way. Saying, talking about nature, it's so interesting because over this last year, I've had this overwhelming, and I mean mm. like so deep in my gut of needing nature. Of yes. Needing, I'm looking at properties. I'm like, I'm going to farm. Same. I feel like I'll catch these visions of, mm. earth, of nature of outside of the green of the tree, like from when I was smaller mm. running on gravel as and it's just this peace that comes over me, water, the, all of this, you know, and you saying, mm -hmm. talking about intuition, and I think that that's a big part of it. And I think at this point in my life, you know, having sort of ground, grind in this business for the last 20 years, I'm finally, just finally believing mm -hmm. my intuition. Mm -hmm. It never steered me wrong. Mm. But I never believed it. I always questioned at every every time I, you know, it would come up <clears throat> and my my voice that, you know, I I was louder than my voice. It's trying to talk to me. And I was always through action, through my work. It, I was drowning it out. Mm. And then, <clears throat> but it was still catching me every single time. It was catching me. It was lifting me. It was holding me. You know, and I just, for some reason, I, that there was this disbelief. And when I finally let go, I had to let go of so much this last year, just letting go. Mm -hmm. I fought that so much of letting go of that and mm -hmm. believing me, believing mm -hmm. my voice. And yeah. hearing clearly and staying quiet <sighs> and listening to it, you know, in a way that I've never done before. And mm -hmm. what I tell you, thing it's just this opening up of myself and then once I cleared all of this nonsense out and just started hearing that voice and allowing myself that space protecting it standing up for mm -hmm. it and feeling okay about that not more than okay about that feeling like this is part of who I am is protecting yeah. what I've created here this space for myself once that happened, hmm. things just came, things opened up. It's the creator, as you were saying, Jen, allowing myself to be held in, in, in that space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is yeah. all I am. Mm -hmm. I am the car. I am the mm -hmm. thing driving the car. Mm -hmm. I am the light inside of me. I am not the thing carrying the light. I am what's inside of that. And I yeah. had to really come to terms with that as far as crazy we started talking about, is my life my career? Yeah. Is my career my mm. life? And how do mm. I reconcile those things through now just understanding myself more? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's been the big discovery for me and the big exploration and, the, and being inspired on the way through that journey and the last yeah. by yeah. all things you know, in the midst of this time where you could drown under the weight of the anxiety and the fear and the stress, mm -hmm. where I think sometimes that's the purpose for mm -hmm. what we created outside of things we can't control is yeah. to keep down. So it's been uh, me learning how to stand straight up yeah. as, a, as a grown ass woman who uh, yes. has complete control of what's around me. So it's been quite a year and it's the control that has been mm. the other. Yeah, and I think for me too is, is, you know, in the conversation of intuition, it was acknowledging 
that intuition. And for me, it was acknowledging it as spirit and that connecting that connection to spirit and and something greater than myself and really acknowledging mm -hmm. the fact and really putting a name to it, you know, really putting a power to it, uh, giving it a source, I think, for me was very, very important and very mm -hmm. pivotal um, and allowing that listening to be instinct and allowing me to just firmly realize that I am a vessel, right? And, you know, in, in, in allowing myself to really do that and allowing myself to connect, um, that was, that changed a lot for me, right? Because a lot of times I realized that before I would listen, my, you know, I would listen to my instinct and I would just kind of go with it. And it, it, it always was a choice, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I had to then, you know, cause it was like, okay, was, is it a brain thing? Is it a spirit thing? Is it a, what is, what is this? Right. What, what you often go with the brain thing, right? Sometimes and other times you go with the spirit thing. And I think for me, like it was kind of firmly standing in acknowledging what it is, acknowledging the connectivity and what that means and why ha why it has been such a beautiful compass and strong compass for me and and understanding that you know that is that connectivity for me that's a huge part of it and and that's why I've been led the way I've been led and to do the work that I've done and you know I I think that like for me that has been one of the you know it, in the, in this evolution, it's been those things that it's been a part of what's taken me over the hill, you know, and what's really kind of allowed me to, to turn the corner in a path that I feel like is truest to where I am currently. Mm -hmm. And it, it took time to to really ass, assess it and 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 add sources and you know and add motives and add you know. Um, those and I was kind of talking about earlier, like just just really addressing my own personal struggles. It is is I've always done that. I've you know even in creative directing, I have always added little pieces of myself because that's how I connect, right? I have to connect to the creativity as 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 I'm connecting to a friend, right? Mm -hmm. If it's like if we don't truly bond, it's not gonna work. It doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I I think that for me now. It, assessing where I'm at so I can connect visually, mm -hmm. right? So I can attach myself to things so I can really create has been, you know, in acknowledging this source, this intuition and in, in moving and merging those things, marrying those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a beautiful union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for me. There's so much. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much in what we're saying that speaks to the power of listening, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and how, you know, um, the, uh, the answers lie within, you know? Oh, um, I say that I every think, day. And I think like, you know, it's so easy to go, you know, don't get me wrong, searching is good because, you know, searching can lead us to things, but I feel oftentimes what's not kind of explored as much, which is what we're speaking to here is the importance of listening, you know, yeah. and stillness to receive the answers. You don't always, mm -hmm. it's not always external movement <laughs> that, is, that is necessary to, because people think movement, physical movement is necessary for generation, right? And it's right. like, you can be generative and you can be still obviously that that's its own form of movement because there's it's an in, in, in interior movement but it the importance of listening as well like what it what i feel like when what we're saying even for myself is the answers are so much more dynamic mm. you know the answers are so much more holistic the answers are often more so serving and because it is holistic it's serving of you its purpose all things and I think at this point in my life like there's something you said Hannah because I'm in that space too where it's like there are certain things certain aspects of life that I used to see as luxury you know like mm. I'll travel and go on a beach you know I'll travel to get like you know 
a you know a, um, a travel out the city to like you know go into the forest or whatever just to get that kind of like fresh air and now I'm getting to the point in my life where those don't feel like you know those don't feel like things that are like uh, gifts you know they feel like things that need to be a part of my everyday life you know yeah. um, and I kind of feel like I'm in that space too of like really you know dreaming new dreams you know mm -hmm. and revisioning some old dreams <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> and um just listening you know and yeah. not being so um and, and and giving and listening without an expectation of when the answer is going to come yes you know? yeah that's the key some, that's such a thing where like we're so and for me it's like this whole thing of like there's no way of getting out if you live in the west you're going to live in this capitalistic structure there's no way of getting away from it completely like we've been socialized that way right but at yes. the same time like really just trying to really hear myself where there's so many voices around you know and there's so many voices that sometimes you can be drowned your, your own voice can get drowned out or you can begin to question what is my voice now because there's so many voices and they become so loud that it's like you know do you become you know do you walk into who you are and where yeah. you want to be or are you walking towards people's idea <laughs> of who you are you know yeah. and yeah. that's such right. a that's such a it's such a seductive line too because you know if you don't catch it in time you'll realize in hindsight, hang on, I've become people's idea versus the version of me, you know, That's right. that yeah. I was going towards. So I'm really just trying to drown out the noise at this point in life. And I'm literally in Oaxaca in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, in Mexico, just, you know, listening to God, listening to spirit, being in water, you know, yeah. giving thanks to the sun every morning, saying good night to the moon, you know, just really just, grounding myself you know so yeah revitalizing yourself revitalizing you know, nourishing exactly you know i was thinking about the door like i've been envisioning this door mm. and walking through it but you know my the hesitance why am i hesitant because i'm afraid if i get on the other side i'm going to be somebody else i don't want to be yeah Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. the door of the industry. That's the door of what we do. It's yeah. the door of like, once yeah. you get on the other side, how do I keep myself? Mm -hmm. How do I keep mm -hmm. myself from becoming exactly what you were saying, this mm -hmm. other thing? And, you know, I had this moment two or three months ago where I was like, no, I can walk through this door and I can keep my whole self. And, and honestly, Jen, I think a lot of it was the working with the Met, right? Mm -hmm. really being this only face in the room mm -hmm. yeah God. and what that kind of does to you in the sense of you know I, I found this peace with that right because as I'm working with the Met talking about this Afrofuturist period room mm -hmm. we've got the pandemic we've got George Floyd we've got Breonna Taylor we've got all of this amount of like all of these things are happening and I'm come into this room where I'm the only one that looks like me mm. talking about something that I at the that time where I was allowing you know my anger to take over yeah um trying to keep the space right trying to say like this you can't have this you know mm. and here I am feeling like the voice in the room that's protecting and fighting mm. to keep this where I believe it should lie. And it's our narrative, it's this community's narrative, it's this story of these artists and that voice is specific and special and I don't want it to get twisted. Yeah. And I don't want it to get, so I'm, I found mm. myself at the beginning of that whole process sort of fighting and you know, doing this. And, and, and as time went on and I was questioning that doorway and what happens when I walk through it and do I even deserve to be where I'm at? Like, why am I here? Why am I doing any of this? Why, you know, do, it's a little bit of that in Western indoctrination. Like you don't deserve it. You should yeah. be grateful for it. That, that old thing. Mm -hmm. 
And when I started to strip myself of this anchor that I've been dragging behind me for so long and just untied it and freed mm. myself and started listening to myself, I found another piece of, all right, maybe that is why I'm here is to be the voice in the room. I don't know. Maybe it is to protect space, my space. And instead of being angry with it, mm -hmm. I'm just going to bring who I am into this room. Just mm -hmm. me and all my loudness and all my silliness and mm -hmm. all my sternness, my yes. beauty, my ugliness, all of it. Just this is who I am. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I'm a little bit mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. all of it. my creativity, my vision, because it's all valid. Absolutely. It's all valid. Mm -hmm. And I think you can get lost in that in this industry, in media, in music. Definitely, um, definitely. Right back to what do they want you to be? Who, who, who? Yeah. And this idea of what is success and uh, how do we accept success? Because no one's handing you a book to tell you like, okay, A, B, C, D, when this happens, right. this is how you handle it. This is how you go through it. So it's been this, you know, crazy sort of in a sense, uh, you know, dreaming of getting to where you are jen back to this uh, nature right needing the sun yeah mm -hmm. definitely might be deficient sometimes yeah. just mm -hmm. literally and figuratively um mm -hmm. you know, looking at the stars every night i've done that since i was mm -hmm. I find venus <laughs> i find venus every night no ryan mm -hmm. and i say words to them and mm -hmm. you know that is what's ha helped me will a lot of things in my life to come mm -hmm. to fruition mm. all of this it's so multi-layered and great you know what i mean i'm yeah. jumping all over the mm -hmm. place all of no, these cool. things mm -hmm. and i see mm -hmm. it like when you came on with this glow and i see the sun i see the incandescent i see the Feel it. Darkness, right mm. and it's that's that's everything it's everything mm -hmm. yeah. it's part of how we create why we create i mean that's a question i think that i would have for both of you guys um mm. or both of i hate saying that but you know, like, what is, what is creative? What is this industry in your life? Mm. How do you have the career, mm. have who you are, your life? What, you know, for me, it was always compartmentalized of like, I have a job and then I have my life. Mm. And at some point, they're, they're, they're becoming entangled and I can't find like, where do I start and where does, you know, where do I end and where does it start or where do I start and it ends mm. or is it okay mm. that all of it together mm. is there a, a, a piece in meshing these things? Mm. Uh, I mean, for me, I don't know where it starts <laughs> or where it ends for me. I feel like the, the two are so intertwined. I'm not the biggest fan of the industry, but I am a big fan of, you know, um, let, me, let me even just be conscious of even how I'm using languages. I feel that, I say for me personally, there's a lot of work that I'm doing and want to be doing that is concerned with helping people see themselves you know, um, and igniting some of these kind of um, more so latent aspects of our beings, right, that exist and we need to wake up <laughs> because the, um, because we need it, you know, in terms of our self-preservation. So there's kind of on a, I'm speaking quite abstractly, but on a level, there are all these things that I'm, very conscious of but mindful of now the machine in which that gets churned out to to a greater audience beyond my friends and family has to be this industry because that's how you know um that's how everything is modeled right now now am i an industry person i always consider myself an outsider in the industry you know i i work quite quietly i live quite quietly and i like it like that <laughs> and um and, you know, fame has never really seduced me. It's not something I need as an individual. It's not a part of my makeup. You know, I don't need it. Um, I get my um, fulfillment from, you know, my, my idea of success is peace of mind. You know, mm. 
Um, that's my idea of success is to be able to, as a human being, you know, as a woman, as a, as a black person, you know, to be able to tra transverse through this world and mm -hmm. still find joy, you mm -hmm. know, and still have peace of mind, that is success. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't subscribe to material success. It just doesn't, doesn't, I don't need it. I didn't grow up with it. I grew up very humbly, you know, um, I get it. You know, I get why people want it because of the algebra that people do, which is thinking this plus this plus this will equal this. And there are many people I know who end up, you know, getting those, attaining those material goals that they wanted and they still are dealing with a sense of emptiness, you know? And so I've always strived for, and that's, you know, it's a part of my, um, it's a part of my parents, you know, how they raised me up was that, you know, was like that importance of knowing who you are, you know, if you know who you are, or if you can get towards knowing who you are, you know, you can begin to understand, you know, and if you understand, that's where divine wisdom steps in, right? And so I've always mm -hmm. been concerned with how do I get to understand? How do I place myself in spaces that are growing spaces, that are nurturing spaces, that are places where, and spaces where I'm celebrated, you know, and I can allow God to enter. These are all things that are really important to me. Now, structurally, you know, in terms of living in an industry and, I mean, living and working in an industry and, you know, living in the spaces that we, you know, we currently live in, I am very aware of the importance of, you know, needing to have certain material things like money, you know, <laughs> to be able to, to be able to, 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 to exist. But in my, I dream of um, a world where we still <laughs> use cowrie beads and we barter <laughs> <laughs> and I say, I give you this, you give me this, and we're that's good, right. you know. That's, so right. that's like that's like the kingdoms <laughs> that I'm trying to get back to. <laughs> because this this whole this whole capitalism thing is a whole hokey doke. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense because I'm very wow. much, I'll be frank, like sure, I'm very yeah. much inside my thoughts right now, and I'm very much um I'm very much just trying to understand things and in my typical fashion, I'm and I'm glad I have this, which is I'm often unafraid to break it down and build it back up, you yeah, know, um, yeah, just sure. to understand, you know, just just to make sure that <clears throat> everything, everyone, you know, everything, everyone has purpose and has uh, a sense of, uh, has, yeah, has purpose. Um, and we're doing things still from a meaningful place, you know, um, so yeah, I'm very much in my, <laughs> I'm in this space and I'm very much in, inside my thoughts, but, um, but yeah. Yeah, I think that I, I can definitely mm. attest to that, um, a, a part of that, especially the latter end of it, where, mm. you know, when we talk about this, ba this balance of church and state, um, mm -hmm. I think for me, it's been, you know, at the, the, the beginning of my career, I was very in, entangled, right? Very much yeah. so. There was no defining, there was no separation. Work was life, that's mm -hmm. where it was. And, and mm -hmm. just going because, you know, that for me, that was a part of the grind. That's what I felt like I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, currently, I kind of say, I stand in this space where it's, I kind of had to take an abrupt stop and, and mm -hmm. really assess every different part of my life. Mm -hmm. And going back to what you were saying earlier, Hannah, gain control of those different things mm -hmm. and decide how I want to step into the next part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, that was a huge deciding factor for me because there's, you know, I, I come, my upbringing was, was, was also pretty humble, but it was also built on this. You work, you, you become successful, like, mm. you know, you be, and, but I didn't understand, you know, of course college, but college, you know, taught me a definition of success 
that I don't know that I fully subscribe to. And I think that I, in defining what success means for me, that's what, that's where I am, right? What does success mean for me in my work, you know, and in the act of creating and, I, I've really gotten to this space where I've become selfish, um, mm. beautifully selfish. And I think, you know, and I say that because it's like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm working on this, but intellectually, what am I getting out of this? Mm. Like, how mm. am I feeding my spirit with this? Like, how am I feeding myself? And I think that that has, you know, been a huge a factor for me in a lot of things that I've done in the last six years, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but I, I granted, I did not know, but it was always the search of like, okay, how is this going to make me smarter, stronger, better, more aware, more conscious? Um, and I think that that was where that's, that's how I became entangled because that was a bit of a refuge, right? Mm -hmm. That for me was kind of like in finding different parts of myself in addressing different demons and doing all of those things within my work, you know, mm -hmm. I just became entangled, mm -hmm. right? Because, because the state became the church, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, and I think that I'm the type of person where I, you know, work on things and I, and I jump in head first. And, you know, I swim in that space mm. and I keep swimming and I swim harder and harder until I find what it is that I have, you know, been been looking for right out of it until I get what I felt like I needed out of it. And in the act of swimming for me, like you get lost. Mm. So now mm. I'm at a place where mm. it's like. It's a, I'm in a place where I'm allowing myself to stop swimming and mm -hmm. and to kind of step out of the water mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and look at it and allow it to, you know, really, again, we're talking about revitalizing in nature and, you know, just allowing it to, you know, allowing myself to one, see myself, right, assess myself, mm -hmm. but allowing what's in front of me to also be a source. And I think that that that's been that's been a huge thing for me now, and and I'm still learning, and I'm still trying to answer a lot of the questions and and figure out what balance is for me, and and understanding when it when I need to stop, when I need to take a day, when I need to take an hour, when I need to take ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm still trying to figure out um, how to really stop swimming. Mm. You know, um, oh, because yeah. the last thing I want and mm. what I experienced before is to be winded. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing to do. I mean, I'm still trying to figure yeah. out that yeah. in sense while for me, it's stepping out of the industry altogether. You know, mm. I thought I was very much raised like very Western, very American dream, like, you know, mm, yeah. the kid running barefoot, you know, through the cow. <laughs> to, yeah. I'm supposed to be doing the, I come, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing. I'm attaining the dream. I'm doing everything I was told I was supposed to do. And I fought my way there to get to the highest place that you can go in this industry and get the thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then mm -hmm. boom, everything should be great now. Yeah. And then I realized like, oh no, it, it, it was not. And I'm mm. here now. And I, you know, I was, I, at one point I was, I remember sitting there with myself, like, you know, staring at that statue, like, okay, it's you and me, buddy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how has this made me any different? How mm. has this made me any better? How has this done anything? Mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. I, yeah. I worked all this time yeah. to, to this place to only be told that now the goalpost is over there. Yeah, it doesn't true. matter what you've done. The goalpost is way over there now, and you're never going to fight. The swim isn't going to stop for you. And I had to be mm. the one to say stop. Mm. And now I'm going to step outside of this, and I can be just as fulfilled because I'm a creative. I'm not just a production designer, just a filmmaker. I'm a creative. I'm an artist. Yeah. I remember when I was in Rome speaking to a group of students, 
film students, mostly production design students. And one of them said, stood up and said, well, do you consider yourself just a production designer or an artist? Hmm. I never really thought about it because I've always said, oh, well, I'm just a production designer. And that was different from being an artist somehow. I wasn't really an artist. I wasn't really creative because I did this very specific thing and I wasn't, I didn't. And I looked and I looked at him and I said, I'm an artist. And then I maybe didn't believe it when I said it, but maybe that's what I wanted to be. And now I believe it that I don't just have to build a set. That's not all of me. Like oh, there's more that I can give. There's more creative in me that's writing, that's, you know, building. So I have a question really quick, just for you, for you, Hannah. Do you feel like you removed yourself from like the act of just working, like in trying to figure out the difference between hmm. production designing and artistry? Like, I know for me, it was a huge, because I experienced the same thing. It's like, do you feel, I, I, I personally reached this place where I realized I had removed myself completely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, at one point I will say after sort of the, the hullabaloo that was Black Panther and mm. what's interesting about that afterwards is everybody was like, oh, you're so lucky. You're, look what you, you know, this is so, this is a big film and it made all this money and da 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 and all the press and all the da da da. And I was paralyzed. Mm. I could, I, I hated film. I didn't mm. want to do with it for months, almost a year, probably seven months. I just, the thought of it was paralyzing to me. Like, I don't want to do this. And I, I went completely the opposite direction, maybe that people might have gone running into it. Like, yes, look what I've done. And then it was interesting. It was like the thing that really, stuck with me during that whole award season was the people I got to meet and talk to, the events I got to attend where it was speaking to students, where it was going and speaking to the Black Student Union at Harvard, mm. and their need to see someone like me. Like yeah. we all mm. cried and held each other at one point, you know what I mean? It was, mm. I see the need for this rep representation mm. and I'm gonna fill that, right? But during the whole thing, I was not okay. Mm. I was not. Mm -hmm. I, went the same thing. I was not okay. Mm. I was not. I, I I just was like a zombie walking through it, you know. And mm. even being at the, I did what I was supposed to do. I smiled, mm -hmm. and I did the thing. Mm. I yeah. put the dress on, I held my responsibilities as per Marvel. I mm. showed up where I was supposed to be and they turned, you know, and Jimena was there and there was many times where it was wonderful and fun. And there was many times where I just was left as a in fetal position in a hotel mm. by myself at the end of the night. And the winning, winning that Oscar the very next day it was just a lot of, you don't deserve it. And how dare you not let your set decorator talk and you disgust me. Wow. Maybe the Oscar doesn't mean what it used to mean now that this woman won it. This is what I experienced afterwards. And I was crushed. I remember throwing it into a, a closet and just closing the door. I don't ever want to see it oh, again. Oh my God. Hmm. And it was heartbreaking. And in all of that, I had calibrated that I was undeserving. I had decided that I wasn't good enough, that maybe it didn't mean what it meant previously in the other 90 years of people, you know, getting. So, and then, and then boom, pandemic. Hmm. And I'm forced to stop. And I was going so hard, I wasn't, but I was forced to stop and then do all this interest, like, walking through the door and who am I and what is success and is my career my life and what is control I have no control here um and giving myself over to this to the creator and to the the bigger energy in the world and mm. need nature again to kind of go back and say to my six-year-old self like you're okay and you're at peace right now and mm -hmm. you're running through you know what I mean like I just see her all the time mm. She was, she was complete. Mm -hmm. She was a full, 
happy person. Mm -hmm. And over the years, it's just broke, 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 broke. So when, as I've been sort of finding my world outside of this industry, I've refound mm -hmm. who I am as an artist, which mm -hmm. I never allowed myself to be because I didn't mm -hmm. think I deserved it because I didn't think anybody else wanted me to be that. Jen, that goes back to what you were saying, like, who, you know, you're going to either decide who you are or someone else is going to decide that for you. You mm -hmm. can use those words that are run from it. And mm -hmm. I was so scared to turn into something that I hated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through this uh, idea of Western success. And I just stopped, you know, for a long while. Yeah do anything and you know there's needs of money there's needs of doing these things and paying my bills and I have a child and a car and a house mm -hmm. thing so I kept on the grind man to do those things then I realized like but I can define what that is I can yeah. survive because I survived before when I was a single mom exactly, okay. <laughs> exactly. So why all of a sudden do I think I can't survive yeah, I, I was shuttling water up the steps and heating it up to get a, my son a warm bath and deciding between the electric and the heat and we survived. Mm. And why do I think now that I can't do that? Well, now I'm starting over and, mm. and I'm finding myself all over again in a different world. Mm. And knowing when I'm in this film world that I'm controlling it. Yeah. No yes. one's going to control me in it ever again. Yes. And whatever that statue is, I think it meant more to other people to see mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> than to me, you mm -hmm. know? And I'll be damned if I'm grateful that someone handed me a gold statue. I'm not. I mm -hmm. deserve it. I did. Because I dragged yeah, myself absolutely. all the way through the mud. I'm fully. And all the way through the dirt on my belly, scraped yeah. yes. the claw to make that thing happen in a way that was at the least bit acceptable to me. And mm. something that I could stand there and face the Black community and say, I did my level best to make sure they didn't fuck this. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what it was. For real. Mm -hmm, right for real and that's what it was and now i'm in this place where it's like oh i can do all these other things i don't need this and that is power. Mm, that's yeah. power that's exactly power. that is and power. then it came yeah. back boom the big bang happened for me mm. and i changed completely so now i'm in this Thank state God. with a different mm -hmm. person because guess what i don't need this yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and what that does yeah. is free you as a oh, oh, oh makes you like air. Makes you like air. <laughs> and it makes me untouchable. Yes. It makes yes. me untouchable. Yeah. And while that will ruffle feathers and upset people, I will also not absorb that. No, energy. it's not your energy to absorb. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not your back to send up. That that's right. And that's that. You know what I mean? And so that's what my year has been of realizing mm. that we have this power that we don't even tap into and utilize because we absolutely are in surviving for 400 years in this country. I don't need your capitalism because I can make it on my own and I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. there, there, there's. <laughs> I love you, Hannah. You're I love you so much. <laughs> that was a that was a word that was I a huge you. that was a huge word for me that and it's just word. i'm at this point i'm just kind of taking it all in because that's 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 you know currently where i am mm. i'm currently mm. like really sifting through a lot of that like that I, that's currently in full in mm. full transparency that's that's <laughs> that's where i'm at the growth space it's the growth space you know it's yeah i i you know what i would say that i made an agreement with myself or came into an understanding understanding with myself really early and i'm and i'm grateful to god and i always say i know i've been here many times because things are very familiar to me you know mm -hmm. on a on a spiritual level so you know, sometimes I remember when I was younger and more junior in the industry, people would be like, oh my God, you know, this person has contacted you or this opportunity has come up. Why aren't you like foaming at the mouth for it? It's because I, you know, I, 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 I've have this kind of innate 
energy of being able to place things in context, right? Um, and so what has happened to me is I'm someone who, for most of the years of my life, I have not been awarded for anything. <laughs> Just, I am a worker bee. I like, I like to work and I like to create and I like to make. But what I have understood is, which is why I was saying earlier, you know, like I go, I like to go into spaces where I am um, celebrated and championed and encouraged. What I do understand is, and this is me being completely transparent, on a strategic industrial level, people need to see, because this is where people, are, most people's minds are, they need to see this plus this plus this means this. So mm -hmm. in my mind, you know, for me, any kind of like form of success or win, it's more for the community than it is for me. I love it and I stay stand in gratitude for it, but it is not making of me does not make who I am. It's not going to decide if I make again or I don't make again. That's a conversation between me and my creator, to be quite frank. But what it does do is on a communal level, and it serves a purpose, it serves a really important purpose of reminding ourselves, reminding community that, you know, if this is what you are striving towards or just kind of like seeing visions, you know, of, what um, a sense of success looks like sometimes can just be enough feel to keep people going, you know, and Definitely. keep people feeling like, you know, they can be seen. So they serve a purpose. <laughs> for me, it's fuel for others. It serves a purpose of, of fueling, fueling inspiration, fueling, um, uh, you know, because there's so many of us that, you know, at many different points of our careers and our lives that say, should I, continue doing this in this direction should I go another direction and maybe you know for what it's worth it serves the purpose of fueling people to say okay let me keep going you know um because you know and success or people who enjoy success don't all look like this you know mm -hmm. they can also look like this and I'm not even speaking on the basic of identity I'm speaking just in terms of let's even go beyond identity I would really love to be there you know <laughs> as a human being which is go into us as people you know as human yeah. beings as spiritual you know spiritual beings like it you know is you know are these things or you know are these things really you know how do we get there because that's that's my concern is like spiritual freedom I always talk about spiritual mm -hmm. freedom I'm always talking about boundlessness I'm always talking yeah. about joy you know, um, because these are all, this is where our wealth lies. This is where the true sense of our fullness resides, right? And I'm trying to get to a space of, as a human being, I'm trying to get to a space of fullness, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I kind of like in recent times have decided is just if the things, the people, the whatever, if they don't serve the purpose of getting to a space of fullness, they don't serve a purpose in my life. And that's how I'm making decisions. It's like, are you getting me closer to um, an understanding, you know, real, real divine conversation, you know, mm. and understanding that, um, understanding the importance of that conversation, not for me, <laughs> you know, not just for me, but for the sake of the preservation of us as people, you mm. know, and how can we, in our actions and in in our ways and in our in our thoughts and in our sharings how can we how can we encourage others you know to get to that space too because you know i'm i'm constantly everyone knows me you know it's like oh my goodness you're i'm constantly talking about children i'm constantly talking about young people because i'm constantly concerned with our futures and i'm constantly concerned with you know <clears throat> Uh, um, on some level, as abstract as it, as it may be, but some sort of maintenance of human ancient spiritual knowledge, like that stuff is so important to me, you yeah. know, um, because there's so many of us that lie destitute, you know, and the reason why I use the word destitute, destitute or destitution is because we are people of, we are people from a space, from a time, from an understanding who are now lost you know and so the journey is really about for me at least is like how do we how do I get back to 
finding the fullness of myself? How do I encourage people to seek the fullness of themselves, you know? And what are the, through the work, which is why I said it's quite difficult for me and I'm not even speaking on a level of industry and personal life, but where my work begins, you know, and where it ends is because it's such a part of my being is my work, right? So I don't, I don't have that clarity yet. Maybe I will never get there. Maybe I'm not supposed to, I don't know, you know, but it's a whole thing for me of like, how do I create in the work for me are really just, I see them as keys, you know? Mm. And like, how can we create bodies of work, pieces of work that serve as inspirational keys to unlock aspects of ourselves that mm. have that been, have been asleep for a while, you know? So can I ask so, a question? I, mm. my, my question is how do, how do you filter that through this mm. age <laughs> of responsibility? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know for me like, mm -hmm. I have always you know so funny I went to film school at Howard and I remember Spike Lee came and did a um, guest lecture once and he said something and it made me feel confident about the way I felt inside and I hadn't admitted because I thought it was not the right answer to give and someone said to him, like, do you make, someone said to him, Spike, do you make films for Black people? He said, no, I make films for myself, you know? And there was something really, and I had to really kind of like think mm -hmm. about that. And what really he's saying, or what, the way I, I can't say what he's saying, but the way I interpreted it and the way it felt in relationship to myself is that I have to allow for the fullness and the interest of my vision to shine through so that others can feel emboldened and confident to allow for theirs to shine through too, right? If I stay in complete servitude to people, I'm gonna give you what you expect. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna work from a space of inspiration. I'm not gonna work from a space of right. curiosity. I'm not even gonna be able to inspire what you haven't seen because I'm living in this space of servitude and all forms of servitude. If we even just think about outside of making work, you know, just kind of like expectation, outside of making work, just living life. There is, some, there is a different negotiation of a relationship when mm. people are doing things from a space of want and yeah. a space of curiosity versus from a space of need and, and a space of, um, a space of, uh, 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 um, I don't know, for want of a better term, it's not coming to mind right now, but kind of from a space of like expectation. When you expect, when you do things from this kind of level of expectation and neediness, you do what needs to be done and you do it in a way that you, you anticipate people think you need it to be done. But right. I need to work from a space of my own curiosities That's right. because how the hell, you know, it's like, when I think about everything, there was a brother from the nation of Islam once I remember, and we were talking and he said to me something real basic, but it just kind of blew my mind. He said, if you look at every single object thing, piece in this world, it, it was so basic, but it was so, it, when it landed for me, it really landed. He said, it all began in someone's mind first, mm. you know, even a simple spoon before it came into That's existence. Right. Someone had to imagine that spoon, the design of that spoon into being before these buildings came into existence. Someone had to imagine what this building could be like. Now, mm. if I work from a space of, this is what people expect me to expect this building to look like. This is what people expect the functionality of a chair to look like. Mm -hmm. I am going to, you know, I'm not serving anyone and I'm not serving myself. So mm -hmm. what I have to serve first before thinking about serving what people expect is to serve my curiosity, right? Because hopefully there's, and if we all kind of work from that space is the aspects of our curiosity, the cumulative curiosities of all of us that allow for things to be done in a different way. That's I remember so when I was younger, my, my yes, mom, I'm so my sorry mom just to jump in really quick, but I was just sure. That, that's so interesting for me is is that mm -hmm. that defining it and and acknowledging it as curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I talked about this being this place of like um, selfishness and and wanting to really understand what it is that I'm getting out mm -hmm. of it. And I think that that for me, you know, and for me, that's that was putting myself first. That's like mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. That is that curious, but then also the, mul the multifaceted, you know, um, definitions of what that curiosity means, right? Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. me, and 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 it's so interesting 
to like, you know, to re, re, renaming it, I would say, as just this personal servitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, and I think that like, hmm. that's, that was a good one for me, just because just, in serving hmm. yourself, it's, it's, it's not, it's not being selfish at all. Oh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. And I feel, for example, I think even really specifically even speaking to film itself, I went to school and there was a way we were taught how to make film, right? And there is a language in terms of how you are taught and how to make film. But again, because I'm a big proponent, proponent of learning all the things, breaking it down and remodeling it and starting again, it's for me, I'm curious about, okay, these are the languages that we are presented in terms of like how to make this thing. What happens if I mix it up? What happens if I put this before this? What happens if I use this element instead of that element? What happens, you know? Right. And so even when I made my, um, uh, one of my earlier films, first film, Free Birth is Necessary, that was a complete so good. exercise in just that. How do I create a work that reads more closer to my mind's eye than the expectation of what it is and but what that's the where I, fall, I of fell in love with you. <laughs> but you, do you see what I mean in the sense of like you everything you are driving saying. my curiosity is gonna you know it just it doesn't just serve you in the end you know it serves every it serves everything right. everyone yeah. you know yeah, so right. that's I, my big thing especially for kids because they got it man and they get it gets beaten out of them and I hate it so much. And so I'm constantly, children are like my everything. It's like keeping them curious and keeping their language boundless and expansive, you know, and all that is just so, it, it, it's, it's ne at this point, <laughs> it's necessary, you know, it's necessary. So that's so, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I think I, in, even in this project that I'm developing now, it's just, I had to ask myself when when did I stop believing things were boundless? Like I had to ask mm. myself when I lost that, you know, curiosity. Like when did things become modular? You know? Mm. Um mm. I in what age, just even as a black man and defining what that means you know, for me and who, in, in, in where I stand in my life, you know, when did certain, when did I stop mm -hmm. believing that fantasy was accessible? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Because it's like, one of the things that I, a while, this is a while, years ago, but I remember reading, um, I think it was the Odyssey, and the way they described the water was like Merlot. Mm -hmm. And the way they, they did, um, described the sky was, I think it was what we would consider a, a field of, of grass. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, these people saw the water as m the color of Merlot? Because no one sat there and said it's blue, 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 it's blue. Exactly. And so the whole world believes it's blue. Yeah. They, it's that curious. This is what I saw. I saw. When did we stop seeing all the colors in a tree? Mm -hmm. When did we stop seeing all the colors in the sky, in the grass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in in the wool, in an mm. animal? Because we're told it's red, it's blue, it's green, it's yellow, it's red, exactly. it's, green, it's yellow. And then we just stop deciding. And we stop exactly what you were saying. Our own curiosity. Dying. Yeah. And yeah. To, you were yeah. saying it's very interesting. If we stop <laughs> telling kids the sky is blue for five years, when they're five years old, and we said, "What color is the sky?" What would they say? Mm. Because we didn't tell mm -hmm. them. This is green, right? You, suddenly, you're you're able to. You, your whole world becomes different because you're seeing with your own curiosity, with your own mind's eye. Yes. It's indoctrination. It's 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 dismantling Definitely. indoctrination yeah. mm -hmm. and allowing yourself. And it's a scary thing for people. It's a scary yeah. thing for me to even think about because then then we have to admit 
we aren't as free as we think we are. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Anyways, we are bound oh, no. up in all of these things that are so mm -hmm. tightly wound and bound that just the mere idea of taking them and becoming light, taking them apart and becoming light is mm -hmm. scary, right? Mm -hmm. It can be scary. So everything you said, yes, the curiosity and when does that end? But you're not, it's, it's, like, I can't even say like that. It, it, it's so on point of when did, when, when did we stop being curious? Yeah. And if we're not, we aren't serving anyone. Mm. Yeah. And I, I found, I also found myself, mm. you know, trying to re relearn a lot of things mm. and, oh, yeah. and, and that manifested in my, in my work and the things that I was a part of and, you know, searching for that and demanding that. You know, and I think that, you know, in, in my journey, there was the part of my career, but then there was the part of like people defining for me what it's what what it means to be a man, what it means to be a black man in society, mm. and how you mm. have to think, how you have to move, what your priorities are, what your responsibilities should be, et cetera, et cetera, right? And, you know, a part of that even comes into where you're, you know, when you're creating for me, speaking for myself, and I had to kind of get to this place where I, I really had to refresh, recalibrate and say, no, this is, this is kind of, this is not what we're doing, right? And this is not how I'm going to create. And this is kind of what I need to see to really nourish myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and, that, and that's why I, I fell in love with, you know, people like you, Jen, it's just, and because I hit you ages ago, <laughs> 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 you know, and I hit you so long ago and, you know, I, know. I watched the birth is necessary and, you know, I was like, wait, hold on. I, I gotta see him at an hour like <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that that was a part of like, you know, that I was at that space then. Mm -hmm. And that's why I saw the pic, the images that, that you were creating. And I was just like, she gets it <laughs> mm -hmm. for me. Because mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. it, it in my mind's eye, spiritually where I was. Yeah. And I don't know how much I needed this. Yes. Same. Mm -hmm. And that's why I just had to like get quiet for a second and take it all in because like it is just a, it's a great way to start my day. I mm. mean, I needed like to hear I needed to hear it so bad. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Crazy. Thank you all. Thank Jenna, you. Maria for, for having this, but I needed to hear those words from you, Jen, about curious. Like mm. I needed to hear that so bad today and for mm. a lot of reasons and for a lot of things. And I, you know, Same. in prep on this film, mm. I found myself getting uh, wound yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. And I needed this moment to realize like, okay, mm. let's get back to that freedom. Let's get back to that curiosity. And yes, and I'm not serving anybody right now because I'm just like head down, grind, grind, grind. And I'm, I can't do that. Like I let myself slip and I realized how much I slipped this conversation and I needed to be lifted and I needed to be directed and I feel like this was supposed to happen and we <laughs> like I'm so glad like what well, I would even in, in all we're, in all we're doing and in all things I think there is on a really tactile level now speaking I think there's something so important and I try to do this and it gets hard sometimes but almost like you know the programming is so heavy right in terms of like how we're made to feel think act whatever like as heavy as that is if we can as an offering like something I'm trying to do even for myself it's just like every day take time out and as, as a part of this conversation like we're having all these things we are discussing think about those things you know mm -hmm. and yeah. keep them front of mind and keep them as active as all the other things that are going on because at least in that way there is a balance between yeah how you're feeling in terms of you as an inner person and everything that's being thrown at you. But where we leave, when we leave, you know, what is those, if, you know, we're not engaging in those things that are us and then this takes over. It's so easy to forget. I always say to people like, you can be the most brilliant people, the most 
brilliant person, the most genius person, the most generous, kind, loving person, but put in the wrong soil, mm. you'll... <laughs> it only takes time you know it only takes time that's what it is you know and so wow. um it's so important you know to be conscious of our like environment and where we can you know just take those moments just to engage with self and listen even if it's two minutes even if it's a minute just to just allow those thoughts to kind of like you know roll through it's really nourishing and it's a part of our self-preservation so mm -hmm. I just offered that, yeah. Today, yeah. I'm gonna do Thank this. you all so yes. much. You know, we could keep talking. Oh, no, we could keep talking. That's what I, I said. Know. I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I think you three should all just like have a constant Zoom. We need a, we need, no, what we need <laughs> is a retreat. <laughs> Okay. We need a retreat. We need yeah. a retreat physically yeah. together. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't want no Zoom. You heard it here. I want to That's see more people yeah. face to face, you know. Yes. I love you both so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I want to just Thank highlight you. that thread that was Thank constant you. of the, the stillness and allowing for that, you know, sense of wonderment where you find mm. curiosity. I think that that's a really important reminder in such a yeah. fast paced world and industry where we forget that it's okay to not be in constant movement. And, you know, I'm really yeah. grateful for that yeah. reminder today. I want to give a quick shout out to the rest of the Film Roundtable team, Aaron Weil, Doug Torres, Matthew Wolf, and Maria Prieto. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support on this platform, for spending the time listening to these artists discuss their craft. Follow us on Instagram at Film Roundtable and subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel to get updates on our upcoming talks. We'll see you all soon. Thank you.